Hey everyone, Jeff Bowders here with Drum Discipline Academy. Today, we are gonna do a little quality control lesson, meaning we're gonna take something we're already familiar with, something we may have been playing for some time, and really dissect it just to make sure we know we're given every single note, it's equal attention, it's focus, we're just playing with, with purpose, we're playing deliberately. So the we're gonna use a fill to, to achieve this today. We're gonna to use the all common, everyone's favorite, the timeless, the classic, the bucket o fish lick. Yeah, everyone's favorite onomatopoeia lick, also known as maybe the John Bonham lick, the snare drum, high tom, floor tom, kick drum. He's probably the guy that made it the most popular because he played it so well and we we're all inspired by his playing and so we wanted to integrate that within our own drum set vocabulary. So that's why we're gonna use that today. We're gonna take it through a couple different note values some of the, the most common note values just so we can really dive in and understand all the ins and outs of this so that we can play it to the best of our ability. So that's the goal today. We're gonna use the bucket of fish. We're gonna get after it. It's gonna be awesome. Here we go. All right, so before we get started, I highly encourage all of you to download the PDF that goes along with this lesson. The link is at the bottom of the video. I spent a lot of time make, making it look awesome and clean for you so you can so you get the most out of this lesson. So go download that so you have a visual representation. We're gonna play through a bunch of exercises fairly quickly and I wanna make sure you can you can follow this to the best of your ability. So so go do that. So the the first variation of this bucket of fish that we're gonna analyze uh, is gonna be the note values of three sixteenth note triplets and an eighth note. And usually phrased as, or usually voiced as snare drum, high tom, floor tom, and then bass drum. And usually the voice, the part of this phrase that kind of sabotages this whole fill is usually the bass drum. A lot of times I'll notice in my playing or uh, other drummers when they play this, there's a tendency to rush that bass drum. That bass drum needs to land on the eighth note, on that and, right? If, it's, if it doesn't, it gets in the way of the floor tom, right? And it starts to sound a little messy. It sounds squashed. It doesn't have that articulation that we're looking for. It doesn't sound nice and full. It sounds kind of just rushed and a little bit sloppy. So these first four exercises that we're gonna play, basically the, the first one is just all on the snare drum because we really want to in, ingrain in our, in our minds, in our ears, in our bodies, what does it feel like to play this three sixteenth note triplets and an eighth note. And then once we play that, the next exercise, we're gonna take off that last uh, left hand of the phrase and substitute it with the bass drum because that's basically what the bucket of fish is. And then the third exercise is the basic orchestration of it, snare drum, high tom, floor tom, bass drum. And then fourth is another common orchestration for it, starting on the two, uh, on, on the second rack tom here, two notes on tom two and then tom three bass drum. So. That's it, follow along, really listen for, the goal is keeping that bass drum, landing that bass drum on that and of every single beat. That's gonna be the goal, that's what I'm gonna try to play. So, let's do it, here we go. Two. 
All right, so hopefully you're able to see and understand the method that we're taking here, using each individual step to help us have a deeper appreciation for every single note that's incorporated within this phrase. You know, just starting with the basic rhythm on the snare drum and then incorporating the bass drum and then finally some of the orchestrations. Uh, it just heightens our understanding, our awareness of it, and that's what we want. That's an awesome thing. We, we always want to have that within our playing. So, but before we move to the next variation, I got to give you a warning, warning, warning. Will Robinson, here we go, is one of the things that I see sometimes drummers do whenever we have to play snare drum and floor tom, they'll use basically one stroke to achieve this, right? It's just one kind of glancing stroke, one continuous stroke. It's, some people call it like the sweep. Ultimately, that's not going to give you the sound that you're looking for, the articulation you're looking for for each individual drum. We need to play, we need to give equal attention to each drum. We, we don't want to cheat ourselves, we don't want to cheat the drum sound, we don't want to cheat the phrase by just kind of getting lazy and just allowing the motion to take care of it. We want to make sure that we're playing with intent each individual voice. And so um, play Play with that idea in mind, okay? That's that's the goal. The other thing is too, I, I gotta I gotta bring this up, is sometimes I see endorse this this other idea where if you have to play snare drum and floor tom rather quickly, is that you can use two different techniques, two different grips. So sometimes people say, well, you could just play the snare drum with a German grip, and then if you don't want to move your arm over, right, you could just go into a French grip, right? And so you go from German to French grip. So you're playing German grip on the snare drum and then you're playing French grip on the floor tom. Are you expecting to get the same amount of articulation and sound and power from a German to a French grip? That's not gonna happen. I'm just telling you, it's not gonna happen. So the idea is don't get lazy. If you're playing with the German grip on the snare drum, move your arm over the floor tom and use the same German grip to get the floor tom. This snare drum is the most articulate voice of the instrument for crying out loud. The floor tom is the one of the least articulate voices because it's low, it's deep, it has a lot of air we have to move. And if we just think a backhanded French grip is gonna produce that sound, we're in for a rude awakening. It's not gonna happen, okay? So don't get lazy, play the snare drum floor tom. Okay, tangent over, sorry guys, here we go. Let's go on to the second variation. This is it. All right, so for this next variation, really nothing different is going on here. The, the only thing we're changing here is now we're starting the phrase on the upbeat eighth notes. We're starting on the ands. So so really, it goes eighth note, and then we're playing those three sixteenth note triplets on the and of every single beat. That's the only thing that's different here. So now we're really landing, the goal is we're landing that bass drum on the quarter notes, right on those downbeats. And we're gonna take it through the same process, just start on the snare drum, then incorporate the bass drum, and then the orchestrations. Here we go, it's gonna be awesome. Do it. So now let's just combine those two variations and see what cool phrasings we can come up with. It. These are the last two on the first page of the PDF. So here we go, follow along.
Okay, cool. We're making some progress now. So now we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to incorporate a different note value rather than playing the 16 note triplets. We're now going to incorporate uh, 30 second notes and 16th notes. We're basically going to utilize this really popular phrase. I think it started within kind of the, the drum core community, but drum set artists have been incorporating into their filled vocabulary for years and it's pretty awesome. It's pretty effective. It's called the, the herta, the herta. It depends on where in the country you're from. But anyway, it's the phrase and the, the sticking is usually right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So we're going to use that for our bucket of fish phrase. And it's the same, we're gonna use that same voicing, but now just the rhythm is slightly different. So we're gonna take it through the same process we're gonna do, we're gonna play these four different steps, start on the snare drum, and then integrate the bass drum, and then the, the first orchestration, and then the second orchestration. So, and the cool thing about this, because it's basically kind of a three note phrase, um, in terms of the note value, three sixteenth notes, if you're gonna count it that way, uh, is that it has three different positions. And so it gives us a lot of cool placements to start this phrase. And we're gonna cover all of them right now. So here we go, let's do it. Okay, so that was version one, basically the 30 second notes starting on the downbeat of beat one. So like I said before, we, it has three different positions. So this next position is, we're gonna start the 30 second notes, those two 30 second notes, actually starting on the upbeat eighth note of beat one, the and of beat one. And that's gonna give it a little bit of a different tilt to it, but um, same, it's the same coordination, it's the same rhythmic phrase, just starts a little bit differently. So. Check it out, second variation, let's try it.
okay, cool. So now there's this last position where the 30 second notes are basically starting on the E of one. And this is gonna be the, the, the last permutation of this Hertha uh, rhythmic phrase um, applied to our bucket of fish lick. So here we go. Follow the PDF. I told you it's gonna help you out if you have the visual representation. So um, follow along, same four step process. We're gonna do a little improv afterwards. So here we go. Okay, so those are all the variations for the, the Hertha rhythmic phrase as applied to our bucket of fish. The other thing that I'm really trying to focus on with this, with the bucket of fish phrase is not only landing the basin that we talked about, but also really making sure that those three notes I'm playing with my hand are even in dynamic and tone. I'm not squashing them, I'm not compromising those notes. I'm really trying to play them with as much articulation and focus and evenness. And I think if that's the mindset that we have, where every single note counts, where we're focusing on giving every single note its proper note value, giving it that equal dynamic um, intensity, that's gonna help every aspect of our playing, right? Just having that heightened sense of awareness is what we want when we play. And using something as familiar as the bucket of fish, like I said, is, is a great way to, to help us get into that mindset, develop that mindset. So, so we're playing with intent, we're playing with focus and we're playing with purpose. And I'm just gonna keep drilling that home, right? Cause that's that's the goal. We, we want, when people hear us play, we want them to go, wow, they know what they're doing. They're playing with uh, with intent and, 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 it's, and it just feels good. They're, they're just not going through the motions and they're passionate about it. And that's, that's the feeling we, we wanna give people. So use this bucket of fish to help uh, iron out any sort of weaknesses or compromises within our playing. And we're gonna, we're just gonna keep getting after it. So there it is. Practice with purpose. Stay focused. We'll see you at the next lesson. Thanks a lot. See you soon.